Hey everyone, so it's the beginning of the school spring break and the Freshwater Fish Society BC has already put fish into this lake. Uh, we're down here at Lafarge Lake today, which is one of a dozen lakes around Vancouver where you can just simply buy a license, come down and catch lots of trout. So this lake, like I say, has been stocked. Last week, the hatchery has put in about just over a thousand fish into the lake. Um, it's part of the Fish in the City program, so every year the the hatchery will put in uh, roughly around five or six thousand fish uh, into the lake throughout the spring and fall. And uh, that f the funding of that fish release comes from your freshwater fishing license. So make sure you go out and buy a fishing license before you come out and, and you can catch lots of fish. So we're fishing for rainbow trout today. Uh, these are catchable rainbow trout. So the fish have been raised in the hatchery up to around 200 grams, 300 grams, and they're released. And this size is not really big, so it's not a trophy fishery, but it's an ideal size for families and kids and for people who want to get into fishing. Um, you can just come down and catch them pretty easily. If you have been following our YouTube channel, you probably have seen this video we did last year at this lake called Float Fishing for Urban Trout. Basically, um, I came down and float fish with different baits such as krill and single air to catch these fish. So these fish can be caught pretty easily with bait. Uh, today, we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna try fishing for them with spoons, but not just any casting spoons, but we're gonna be fishing these with these trolling spoons. So these are uh, Gibbs uh, Gypsy ca uh, trolling spoons and they're trolling spoons because they they have no literally no weight to them uh, it's a very 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 light spoon see how thin it is so they're not designed for casting but we're going to be casting from shore anyways and I'm going to show you guys how to do it and why we're using this particular spoon instead of a casting spoon such as a uh, Gibbs croc So Lafarge Lake is relatively shallow, um, so it, if the, the first 50 feet or so it's perhaps a couple feet deep. If you're using a heavy casting spoon um, and cast out, you have to retreat pretty fast, keep, keep that spoon off the bottom. And a lot of times if you're retrieving too fast, the fish wouldn't be able to chase the, sp uh, the spoon down and uh, that becomes somewhat pointless uh, when you're using casting spoon. And the other thing is you want to reach the deep water further out, so you would need to use a heavier casting spoon. But heavy casting spoon, spoons are, tend to be a little bigger, and uh, when the spoons are too big, remember we're only catching fish that are around 200, 300 grams. If the spoons are too big, the fish are not going to go for it. We're still, so we need to use small spoons, uh, but small spoons are pretty light. You need to figure out how to get that spoon out. And that's the challenge, and we've got the right solution here for you. So if you're using a small trolling spoon like this, which weighs, I don't know, less than a couple grams, you can't just cast with that uh, because you'll, you'll never get anywhere. You might get a couple feet out. So what I've done here, I've tied a leader, a couple feet of leader uh, with the trolling spoon at the end, the gypsy spoon at the end. Uh, then the lead, at the other end of the leader, I have a little swivel. And then I have a piece of weight that is attached well just uh, on the main line that comes down to the swivel down to the leader so this weight is gonna get your spoon all the way out into the middle so you can use that way you can use sliding weight uh, to do that but this is what we call a bombarda float um, it's a European terminal tackle it's not real it's not a tri uh, conventional float that's used for uh, detecting bites on the top of the surface but this thing actually sinks down very very slowly so it doesn't sink like a, a lead weight the lead weight will sink really really fast all the way down the bottom but because of the lighter density this thing would actually sink very very gradually almost like a uh, fly sinking line the sinking fly line and uh, so you can get your distance out because it weighs about 15 grams and at the same time it doesn't sink very fast so you won't snag on the bottom so that's how you can keep your trolling spoon in a strike zone without snagging on the bottom so let's try this out and see how it works alright so let's give it a go So there are a couple things you can do to get your 
if you want to get your line really far out. Um, so the first thing is you want a fairly long spinning rod. Um, the longer spinning rod can keep your lure in the air longer and that will reach, uh, reach further out uh, when you cast. The second thing is um, braided line. So normally uh, I would have my real spool with uh, Maxima Ultra Green. That's my favorite monofilament line. Um, but today I got Power Pro braided line on there. Um, this is rated 15 pound test, but the thickness of the line is actually around four pound test mod filament. So it's fairly thin, yet quite strong. And, and because the line is fairly thin, that allows me to cast the rig out pretty far. If I, if I were to use 15 pound test uh, model line, um, that wouldn't get the lure out very far at all. So that's two things you can do to, uh, to get your long distance casting achieved. So longer spinning rod and also braided line. So we switch to a different spot now. Uh, as you can see, this is where the fish are because look at all the fishermen around us. Um, a few fish rising in front of me and as soon as I got here had a couple bites so that's always a good indication of fish around. You see the people around us catching fish. How come I'm not catching them? <laughs> this is fine. Oh tiny guy <laughs> what the heck is that? What is that? Kind of fell hook it too. Oh, it's a little cutthroat. No, no, it, it is. It is a rainbow. It's a little one, one of the smaller rainbows. Um, that's one of the smaller ones out of the batch. Uh, usually they're about twice as big as that. That kind of explains why I was getting so many taps and couldn't hook them. Oh, yep, yeah, there's another one. This one's a little feistier than the other ones. A little bigger too, I think. Here you go, another nice catchable Fraser Valley rainbow trout. The hook comes out pretty easily because it's barbless. And off he goes. Actually, I'm not going to grab this. I'm just going to unhook it and let it go. Nice and easy. Whoop. Up he goes. Oh, there's another one. Little guy. Oh, came off. Easy release. Oh. <laughs> came off. There's another one. <laughs> and it came off again. Oh, there's another one. I didn't think that was on, but it actually stayed on and it looked pretty well. Little guy though. <sighs> So to fish in one of the fish in the city lake, like Lafarge Lake, you have to have your freshwater fishing license. If you're under the age of 16, you don't have to have a license, but if you are 16 or older, you have to buy one. Um, and once you have your license, you come out and you can fish and you can keep fish. Uh, the daily quarter of fish in Region 2, which is Lower Mainland, Fraser Valley, Sunshine Coast, in four lakes, uh, it's four trout a day. But for some lakes like Lafarge Lake and some of the urban lakes, um, the, the daily quarter of fish has been reduced to two fish a day. So you can only keep 
two fish a day. Um, the reasoning behind that is the, the fishing pressure is quite a bit higher. Um, if everyone keeps four fish a day, um, there'll be not that many fish left in no time. So by reducing that, um, they limit to half, um, we can actually sustain this fishery a lot longer throughout the season. Well, that was a pretty short but eventful session. Uh, we fished for about two hours today. Started out pretty slowly. The first half an hour, we didn't get any fish and uh, we didn't see any fish at all. Had to move around a little bit to find them. And you can, as you can see, the last hour or so, I had you know, to get into quite a few fish. And that's fishing. Um, it can be pretty moody, even with these uh, stocked hatchery rainbow trout. Um, the fishing can come on and off, especially this early in the season uh, when the water is still quite cold. Uh, if you want to come down and try this fishery, um, generally between mid-March and mid-June is the best time to try. Um, that's when the fish are being stocked into the lakes and springtime is generally trout season. And uh, definitely give these uh, Gypsy Spoons by Gibbs Delta Tackle a try. As you can see, they can be pretty deadly, uh, not just for trolling, but also casting and retrieving from shore as well. Uh, if you want more fishing information in British Columbia, please check out our website at fishingwithrod.com. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for more fishing videos to come. And uh, leave a comment if you have any questions regarding this fishery or any other fisheries in British Columbia. I'm always happy to answer them. So until next time, good luck fishing.